Welcome, this is a review of using the Zenaria ZS3 with software version 0.0. There are some customizations that will be based on location setup. This is an image of the Zenaria ZS3. Your system may have to access more than three probes, or you may have to remove probes for cleaning. Grab the dial and turn the counterclockwise. A probe base can then be removed. Replace it into the seat of the probe and turn the dial clockwise so it is oriented vertical to lock it in place. This is an overhead view of the keyboard and control keys for the ZS3. The QWERTY keyboard is at the top for entry information and text. There are OLED soft keys below the OLED display that changes based on function. The second row are the function keys. On the 9.0 software, the screen displays the menu indicators at the bottom of the screen to show what the OLED soft keys and function buttons are programmed to do. There are two rows. The OLED soft keys are displayed on the top row of the menu indicators, while the function keys are displayed on the bottom menu indicator row. Below these areas are the operational keys that adjust the ultrasound image and control modes. Some buttons have changed name and function. The measure key is now the caliper button. The enter key is now the point button. The harmonics key is now the priority button. And the menu key is now the select button. Turning on the system. The power button is located on the tower near the probe connector. When first turning on the system, you will see the startup screen. As the system goes through its checks, note the progress bar at the bottom. When the machine is ready to scan, you will see the LDAP login box. This is for you to log into the machine using your 801 ID and system password. The easiest way is to barcode scan your ID badge. Scan the barcode that is on one side of your ID badge to enter your information or your 801 login to the dialog box. You can see here that your ID number has been placed in the login dialog box after barcode scanning. Type in your system password. This is the same one you use to log into other systems. When your system password is updated, it will be updated for the ultrasound systems. The ultrasound system will have to be connected to the network to allow the login. After typing in your password, press the return key. You could also use the trackball and set keys to click on the dialog box. Once logged in, you will see the imaging screen, so now you can start to image. If you see the error dialog box, then either you do not have access to Cubathian ultrasound, or you type your password wrong. If you are unable to log in, the network is down, or there is a time critical event that requires ultrasound use, click on the emergency button to bypass personal login. Let's review how to enter patient information for a study. The easiest method is to barcode scan the patient information. Barcode scan the patient sticker that has the ECD or FIN number. You can also barcode scan the patient bracelet, scanning the barcode that are lines. These are representative of the ECD or FIN number, just like on the sticker. Patient info will then be added to the study. If you receive a network error, you can continue with just the FIN number for the patient. The system will reconcile the remainder of the information in QPath E. Then barcode scan the badges of all users who are involved in the study. Operator information is then added to the study. If you don't enter any provider, the LDAP user who logged in is tagged to the study. Occasionally, you may see this dialog pop up. If you are adding users after acquiring images, it will ask you if you want to replace or append, meaning add, the user to the study that is in progress. If the network is down or the system is disconnected from the network, you can enter patient and user information manually. Press the new patient button at the top of the curtain keyboard. On the patient information screen, the only information that you need to enter is the ECD FIN number and the 801 number of the user. You are now ready to scan. The screen will now have the patient information, the users for the study and the date, and the probe and preset that is in current use. Let's review how to select the probe and study type you want to use. The first step is to select the transducer you'll be using. Click the transducer button. On the screen, you will see all the currently attached probes and the different presets you have available for each of the probes. Use the trackball and the set key to choose the preset and probe you want to utilize. A close-up view of the different presets that you can select under each probe. They are divided by region or preset grouping. You can still select the probe and preset by the old method on the Zenari systems from software version 7 if that is your preference. Select a probe by pressing the transducer button. Choose the transducer that you want to use by the far right OLED buttons with the transducer name listed on the OLED screen. The probe name is also displayed on the top row of the menu indicators on the screen. Remember, these are not actual buttons, but display what the OLED and function keys are programmed to do. Now you have to select your preset. Click on the exam type button to select your preset. The OLED soft keys will display the quick pick list of presets that are most commonly used for that probe. 
These quick picks may be different based on your location setup. You can see that the top row of menu indicators show the quick picks that are displayed on the OLED soft keys. The top row of the menu indicators match the OLED soft keys that are displayed. With the far right OLED soft keys, the dials, you can choose the probe that you want to use by turning the dial to highlight the desired probe and then pressing the button to select that choice. You can then use the other two dials to pick your preset. The middle dial picks the preset group and the last dial picks the exam preset. Once again, press the button to activate the highlighted option. Let's review using the system to scan and capture images, starting off with menu and key function. The OLED soft keys have a small OLED display that shows what the key does. This function changes with the different presets. The function keys generally retain the same function in all presets. The bottom row of the menu indicators that are on the screen correspond to the function keys. You can see the notes of F1, F2, and F3, etc. The top row of the menu indicators correspond to the OLED soft keys. You will see page one and the dot showing you are one of two for menu items. By clicking on the first OLED button, you will be taken to page two that shows page two of the OLED button options. Note the function keys have remained the same. There is also a display with indicator for trackball and surrounding keys. The select key is activating the cine loop menu options. The trackball scrolls through the cine loop and the pointer button is located here. There are several icons listed at the bottom left of the screen. Caps locks can be on or off. Wi-Fi connection and strength is displayed. The server connection for transmitting and receiving data. And the battery is displayed showing a charge level and whether the system is plugged in or not. Let's review how to adjust depth. The depth key is on the operational keyboard and toggle down to go deeper and toggle up to be more shallow. Depth markers are displayed on your screen with hash marks and interspace numbers showing your depth in centimeters. Let's review how to adjust frequency on the system. Frequency is changed by toggling up or down on the frequency toggle button. Go up to increase frequency and down to decrease frequency. The order takes into account fundamental frequency, spatial compounding, frequency compounding, and harmonic. The frequency and processing information is displayed in the right hot brand corner of the image along with the MI and TI information from the output display stand. The frequency information is displayed at the top with the number showing the fundamental frequency used and what additional parameters are engaged, such as compounding, spatial compounding, and H for harmonics. These are taken into account in the order of frequencies. So while the fundamental frequency may not go in consecutive order, the order of frequencies displayed is correct as you go from high to low while toggling the button. Let's review adjusting gain on the system. The first thing you should do when obtaining an imaging window is to press the optimize button. This uses a computer algorithm to adjust gain based on the image acquired. To then adjust overall gain, turn the dial around the B button to increase or decrease the overall gain of the image. You can then fine tune gain with the time gain compensation sliders. Each slider on the time gain compensation corresponds to a depth on the image. The higher sliders are in the near field, the lower ones in the far field. There will be some times where you need to freeze your image and manipulate the cine loop. The freeze button is located right above the trackball. If you have a frozen image, the lower portion of the screen will display the cine loop, showing how many frames are temporarily stored. You can use the trackball to scroll forward or backward in the cine loop to find the image that you want. As you scroll through, you will see the image you are displaying on the cine loop. In this example, we are on frame 1072 of 1199. The system comes with built-in caliper and calculation functions based on your preset. The caliper button brings up the caliper menu to measure structures on the image. Most have either distance or distance with depth as their default caliper. The caliper menu is displayed to the left and you can choose which caliper you want to use with the trackball. The item measured is displayed in the right hand corner. The trackball will move the caliper mark to the desired location. Click on the set key to set the mark and bring up the other caliper mark to get your measurement. The calculation button will bring up the calculation package menu for the preset that is active. Not all presets have a calculation package. Most commonly used are the OB and cardiac presets and calculation. The calculations menu is displayed on the left. Choose the calculation that you wish to perform. The trackball and set keys will once again be used to move the caliper marks to the desired locations. OB has an auto OB setting that when selected will auto measure the gestational age based on the image obtained. You can also use the manual modes that are listed below. After measuring the calculated value will appear in the dialog box on the screen. These images with values should be captured for archiving. The calculation caliper package varies based on the preset and mode. For instance, here you can see the fetal heart rate calculation since we are in M mode tracing on the OB preset. Let's review how to save images and clips. The store buttons are set to function the same to prevent confusion. When pressed, they store a 6 second prospective clip if you are live scanning. If you have a frozen image, they capture a still image. When complete, the system will beep to let you know the clip is over. 
If you press the store button again before the six seconds have elapsed, the capture clip will be truncated to a shorter length. The print button will capture a still if your machine does not have a printer attached. If there is a printer attached, it will then print the thermal image. When capturing an image, you will see a notation at the bottom of the screen saying that it is saving to disk and network. You will also see the progress bar as the six seconds elapse during capture. When an image is captured, it will be stored on the network. You will see a pop-up in the left lower corner that the image or clip has been stored on the network successfully. Let's review using the different ultrasound modality. The different ultrasound modes can be activated by pressing the button with the mode indicator on them. There is B mode, or grayscale imaging, color Doppler, spectral Doppler, and M mode. When a mode is active, the button is backlit in green versus white for the others. To activate M mode, press the M button. After clicking the M mode button, the M mode tracing is activated. Both the B mode reference image and the M mode tracing will be live when you are scanning. The M mode spike can be moved with the trackball. Turn the dial around the M button to increase the M mode tracing gain. You can adjust the gain on the B mode reference image and the M mode tracing separately by turning the dials. Press the C button to activate color Doppler mode. The color Doppler box will appear with angle and velocity defaults based on the preset that is active. There are color Doppler menu items that are manipulated by the OLED soft key. The options are displayed on the top row of the menu indicators and in the OLED display. Most commonly will be the switching between power Doppler, color Doppler, and directional power Doppler. You can see that the top row of menu indicators correlate with the OLED soft keys, showing that the dial is the one to change between Doppler modes. The menu priority is shown by the trackball display. To change the menu that has priority, press the priority button. Pressing the priority key will change which menu is active on the OLED screen and displayed on the top row of the menu indicators. You can see that the color Doppler menu is active and highlighted in green. Pressing the priority button will change the OLED menu to the cine loop menu. Pressing again will switch it to the B mode menu. As you change the active menu, note the menu indicators and therefore the OLED soft key menus change and update. Press the D button to activate spectral Doppler. If you have color Doppler active, then triplex imaging becomes active. Here, triplex has been activated with an active B mode image, color Doppler, and spectral Doppler tracing presented. To turn off all different modes and return to grayscale imaging, press the B mode button. The function of the trackball changes during Doppler modes. When spectral Doppler is active, there is a note that appears at the bottom of the screen. This note says, press select to toggle color box size, color box position, and Doppler cursor. Use the select key to toggle between these different options for the trackball during Doppler imaging. While priority will change the OLED menu, the select key will change the trackball function, which will be displayed here near the trackball on the indicator menu display. As you press the select key, you will see the trackball notation change between mark pause or mark position, meaning the spectral gate position, C pause or the color box position, and C size or color box size. The spectral mark, spike, or gate will be moved by the trackball in this view. Also note that the OLED menu indicators are on pulse wave priority, so the menu adjusts the spectral gate property. In color Doppler, when the trackball is changing the color box, you will see the box highlighted in green. We have adjusted the color box size in this image. Here we have moved the color box position by using the trackball and the select key. Point of care ultrasound requires documentation of your examination. You can log into QPath E and document on a computer workstation. Refer to the QPath E video for instructions if you were to use a workstation. However, the other option is using QView, a scaled down version of QPath E that you can access from the Zonari ultrasound machine directly. Use QView after all your images are captured for the study, but before you end the study. Press F2 to enter QView. Press F2 to enter QView. It has been labeled on your machine and is displayed in the function key row or bottom row of the menu indicators on the screen. When QView first activates, you may see a blank screen or a screenshot of the previous used worksheet. This is as the information for a current exam and exam worksheet are loading. A percentage load will also display at the top of the screen. You will be presented with the exam worksheet from QPath E for the active patient with the exam worksheet based on the active preset. You can only complete one worksheet per patient. If you did more than one type of exam, you can only complete one of them in the current QView. Remember, this has limited functionality to allow wireless loading to the machine. Also, when in QView mode, the system is functioning like a computer. Use the left set key with the trackball like a mouse click. By clicking on the drop-down menu, you can change and update the operator for the exam, the attending for the exam, and the exam worksheet that is displayed. Complete the worksheet as you do on a workstation computer. The sections that are required have a red asterisk present. To sign the worksheet, click on the Sign As button. To sign, type in your 801 number and password, then click the Sign button. If you have not completed the required fields, you will not be able to sign. The red banner will appear, noting that the worksheet is incomplete after you attempt to sign. 
The worksheet is now signed. Displayed at the top is the pen icon with the name of who signed the worksheet. The worksheet is now completed and signed in QPathy and will be automatically submitted for review and other automated rules. Only one person can sign a worksheet in QView. If you are an attending or APP, you will have to complete the supervisory statement. If you have not signed the exam worksheet, click on the Save button to save the things that you have filled out. I would suggest signing to have the system check your documentation for completeness. To change to the supervisory worksheet, click on the drop down menu for the worksheet. The drop down menu would display the two active worksheets. Select and highlight the supervisory worksheet. QView cannot display both worksheets at once, like in QPath E on a computer workstation. You can now see the supervisory worksheet with the red banners to place your APP or attending statement and study type. Once complete, click on the Sign As button. Enter your 801 ID and password to click on the Sign button to sign and save the worksheet. The barcode scanner does not work in QView. The worksheet is now signed and saved. Note the pen icon and name listed again. To exit QView, click on the arrow button in the far right corner of the screen. Alternatively, you can also press the Report button to exit QView. Once you have completed capturing all images and any documentation you want to complete on the system, press the End Study button at the top of the QWERTY keyboard. If you do not end your study, images may be captured under the wrong patient identifier. When all your scanning is completed or you leaving the machine, press the F4 or Log Out button to log out of the system. If you do not log out, studies may be performed by others under your name. Do not hesitate to contact your point-of-care ultrasound faculty with any questions or requests for assistance.